Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program, Capital Beat. Last year, if you remember, Supreme Court had put the sedition law under abeyance and it had instructed the center and the state governments not to file any FIR under Section 124 and also had asked them not to resort to any coercive measures. One year later now, the Law Commission of India has recommended that 124A should not be repealed as there is enough ground to retain this law. That is number one. Second, they have said that amendments are needed so that the potential misuse of the law can be prevented. But yes, in terms of the sentence, many people are saying that this law, as recommended by the Law Commission, is now more draconian and is more ferocious. So why did the Law Commission of India recommend this law to be retained, make it more ferocious? Though Arjun Ram Meghwal, who is the, the union law minister, he has said that it's just one step in the consultative process and he will try and speak to all the stakeholders before finalizing any issue. Joining me now is uh, veteran Supreme Court uh, lawyer Sanjay Hegre with us. Sanjay, thank you so much for joining. My first question you, for you is, Mr. Hegri, what was the need for the Law Commission really to uh, uh, recommend amendments and say that this law is, uh, is of course, needed? See, the Law Commission's job is to constantly review laws, make recommendations, updating laws, or, say, or saying get rid of old laws. Hmm. As far as sedition was concerned, right from the beginning of our republic, from the days of Pandit Nehru as first prime minister, he said that this is the prince of bad laws and we should get rid of it. But every government, while paying lip service to the idea of uh, getting rid of it, found it a useful tool. And you see, in the early days of the Republic, when the Supreme Court was not really looking at striking down laws, but were trying, was trying to read down laws to make them consistent with the new constitution, the Supreme Court read down the sedition law in Kedarnath's case, and brought it and said that it's only acts which, uh, only speech which at, uh, attracts violence, which would come within the ambit of the law, hmm. like to make it constitutional. However, in actual working, it still remained in the realm of the Thanedar's danda. It was a big danda, which the Thanedar could use from time to time, right. and it has been indiscriminately used. Right. So again and again, questions kept coming back to the Supreme Court. And that is why, as you said, the Supreme Court stayed some of the, pro uh, the proceedings under it. Right. And the government said, we'll have a relook. Right. But the relook with, through the Law Commission has actually come uh, up uh, uh, saying that, oh, we relook, but we think, oh, okay, there is a Supreme Court judgment which has held it to be constitutional, but, but put in uh, some safeguards will incorporate the safeguards and thus it will be constitutional. Right. It was not, I, in my considered opinion, it was not a relook at the necessity. Okay. It was a re-justification of the law which has happened through this law commission report. Right. But uh, do you see this law now as more ferocious, more draconian? Uh, uh, how do you see that? Well, the uh, proposed amendment actually makes it uh, more overbroad. You see, uh, they, uh, some of the uh, sections and explanations uh, also make it overbroad, where uh, uh, especially that explanation four says the expression tendency means mere inclination to incite violence or cause public disorder, then Proof of actual violence or imminent threat to violence. Now, let me explain what it means. Previously, the law said that, you know, if uh, you said that all so-and-sos must, uh, must be exterminated unless there was an actual uh, uh, violence which occurred as a, a result of that speech, you did not come within the uh, ambit of the sedition law. But right. now... It's an inclination to uh, you know, incite violence. Oh, hmm. all so and so's must be exterminated. And why so and so? It, it could be X, Y, or Z. Uh, you, you just need to uh, 
have a tendency that oh violence may flare up right. irrespective of whether uh, uh, it actually does or not see very often when we speak we tend to exaggerate oh i could so kill you for this hmm. meaning okay. nothing meaning nothing right. but now under this law oh this also could come conceivably become sadistic right so uh, it's it's very clear mr hegde from what you are saying that uh, this law could further be more misused uh, on the basis of uh, the amendments which are being uh, brought about absolutely the all that it says is that uh, uh, some inspector must take a call on it hmm. and then there must <coughs> uh, uh, there must be a, a go ahead from the government which is also the case uh, with the current law even yeah. under the current law you need you need a sanction from the government hmm. and you and you saw that uh, uh, even in cases like kanaya kumar the government of delhi granted sanction why because the moment somebody's speech is termed possibly anti national then nobody wants to be seen as standing against the nation right let things get sorted out to a trial then then the process becomes the punishment right but uh, this whole premise that you know i mean all all these years we've been hearing that sedition law is a is is something which uh, you know is of a colonial legacy it needs to be completely repealed on that the law commission has said that if you take that as a virtue then of course the entire uh, legal system uh, is 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 a colonial legacy and the, the law commission has also uh, uh, made pointed remarks about the civil services exams and all this is a colonial legacy that everything needs to be repealed that is well, the question which they are giving the law commission has done what lawyers often do it creates an unknown ghost and then pr uh, proceeds to slay it. when mm -hmm. it is said that it is colonial mm -hmm. it means that it comes from a time that we had a king emperor ruling us when we had a king emperor or empress ruling us then standing in defiance of that emperor or empress was sedition right and that is exactly the roots of the sedition law that how can you go against mm -hmm. a king who is there by divine right hmm. that was how it came in, in england not all the waters of the rough root sea can wash the balm of an anointed king to cite my shakespeare so it was it, it is that kind of methodology Absolutely. we now live in a democratic republic we are citizens of a democratic republic we have rights if we have a government we elect a government we give them a lease for 5 years and every 5 years that lease has to be renewed hmm. as rahat indori felicitously said jo kal tak ke sahib e masnad aaj nahi hai kiraydar hai zati makan thodi hai hai sabhi ka khoon yahan ke mitti mein shamil kisi ke baat ka hindustan thodi hai but right. now having a sedition law sort of implies that we are back to emperors we are back to kings we are back to a colonial construct and somebody who is the bap of all hindustan that is certainly the law commission missing the point on colonialism yes colonialism gave us the railways colonialism also gave us the english language with which we are speaking then not everything which comes from past heritage is bad but the very construct that we are no longer subjects of his mm. majesty the king right we are equal citizens who vote who then give a temporary lease on power to our elected representatives that uh, that is never been considered by the law commission right absolutely but mr higri i was just uh, reading a few lines uh, from this report which said that another justification which law commission has given they have said that pro uh, proliferation the 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 proliferating role of social media is propagating radicalization against india and bringing government into hatred and many a times at the hands of foreign power so which means that this is the justification which they have given that uh, you know it's it's the adversarial powers which are inimical to india they often stand you know against odds and that is probably another justification why they want to retain this law as the law commission explained how it will take action against foreign powers 
if somebody is doing it from abroad are you going to be able to then bring that person or those persons to book under uh, this law no what will happen is that you see something in in you or i see something on a foreign website we retweet it hmm. we are likely to be held guilty of sedition because we retweeted it and disseminated further it into our followers so this is a bad justification and in fact i think that the entire report seems to be written with the conclusions written first and the justification they uh, put in there up but uh, what does it show i mean uh, 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 talking purely on the intentions of the government if the law commission is saying it though arjun ram meghwal has said that no he is going to talk to all the stakeholders but what do we what do we assume uh, at least here on from now that uh, is the government really going to retain this law it won't repeal let's put it this way this government pandit nehru's government or any other government when they are in government they will want to retain the law when they are voted out they will want this law to go hmm. and uh, i would i would find that uh, an interesting exercise if some other government then this comes into power in 2024 whether they will also then choose to say oh there is a law commission report we will, we will bring that into effect rather than doing away with it all together see uh, mr nariman had that phrase that power is delightful and absolute power is absolutely delightful hmm. so the sedition is an absolute power which you, is absolutely delightful to use selectively against people who do not like you and who make no bones about the fact they do not like you but uh, mr higri there are many countries which have repealed uh, the sedition law and uh, one particular line in this uh, law commission uh, report also says that repealing 124a of the ipc merely on the basis that certain countries have done it is essentially turning the blind eye to the glaring realities existing in india now what is the law commission really wanting to say when when they make a comparison see the law commission proceeds on the idea that india can be held together only by the thanedar and uh, therefore you need to have strict laws under which you can put anybody in so notwithstanding the fact that there are other much stricter laws like uapa nsa and all that you also want this as the power of the extra, extra where if you if you don't can't get them under those bad laws then there is at least a residual clause under which you can get almost anyone i don't think that the law commission is right that there are similar laws in other countries are used this indiscriminately we have had cartoonists who uh, who have been arrested we have had uh, uh, even somebody as respected as dr vinayak sen who has been the only case where there has been a life sentence for sedition and recently after what after what we saw is seen in the defamation case the mere possibility that there is a maximum sentence is sometimes uh, useful to uh, thanedar investigative thanedars suffering from prosecutorial uh, overreach and judges who then think it is very patriotic to slam the entire book at the so called offender hmm. well, i think it is a highly dangerous law to be allowed to be con- to continue on the statute book we <laughs> hope that the government would uh, find a way of repealing it but it does not look like this government or many, any other government also uh, feels uh, that it will actually repeal right but we say agree you were talking about the sentence uh, just now and they have also i mean law commission has also recommended some amendments regarding the sentence well earlier now they have made it uh, they have recommended a maximum life term or 7 years or just a fine that is the the new provision which they are talking about whereas earlier it was uh, 3 years and then fine and of course the life term what difference will it make now in terms of the sentence if you look at as for the recommendations of uh, the law commission see when the maximum punishment is life then all those procedural safeguards 
where crimes uh, attract a punishment of less than seven years, all that will not be applicable. You may provide for sort of, it only it makes explicit what was already implicit in the old law act, where the punishment was up to life. You could sentence somebody to one, one day, you could sentence somebody to seven years, and you could sentence them all the way to life. What difference has come? Except by saying, oh, up to you can you can do it uh, two seven years, to which fine may be added, or it can go to life. I don't think too much of a change has come. The law still is very arbitrary and rather more draconian. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I asked you, Mr. Higde, that uh, so whatever changes uh, the Law Commission has recommended, the law still looks more arbitrary and draconian. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is where uh, something was to be made milder or eradicated. And what has what is being proposed is a remedy worse than the disease. But uh, I'm, I'm really surprised at the kind of justification which uh, the Law Commission also has tried to give you in this section 124. And they have said that there will be a compulsory investigation made by an inspector rank officer. And uh, of course, with the approval of the state government or the central government and before filing any FIR, and he has to complete the preliminary inquiry within seven days. Now, what difference will it make uh, because I, I believe that this provision was there earlier as well. Yes, previously also, to launch a full prosecution, there had to be sanction from the government. So all that has happened is that some sub-inspector may not file the FIR, an inspector has to file the FIR. Hmm. Uh, they, they, that, that can be done at any point of time. Right. So uh, from what, what do we assume, sir, from here on that... Uh, 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 the, the the Modi government is just not interested in repealing the law and we will have to uh, be very careful. How will it evolve in terms of the society now? Because everybody is scared. To be, to be fair to the government, the law commission is technically independent of the government. It is not that the government tells the law commission that this is the kind, this is the kind of law which we ask you to help frame. It, it gave independent uh, uh, terms of reference to the law commission, the law commission has come up with the report. It's up to the government whether to accept the report or, uh, or to not accept the report. Mm -hmm. And the law commission report together with other materials will be available to the parliamentarians to debate it if and when they, they pass this uh, uh, piece of legislation. Uh, going by the calendar, I suspect that in the life of this Lok Sabha, nothing will really happen. The real call will come in the next Lok Sabha. Okay. But uh, this this whole point uh, of uh, Mr. Uh, Meghwal, uh, who's the law minister, he has said that, of course, the report is is just is not persuasive. It's not bind, binding. This is what he has said. But what do we assume, sir? Uh, I mean, like all laws are being passed in parliament, as you're saying that whatever happens will happen in the next Lok Sabha. But what if uh, some recommendations are being, uh, I mean, the, the current government thinks of implementing it? Uh, because the opposition leaders have to be targeted. Uh, as what Abhishek Manu Singhvi also a few days back said when this Law Commission report said that they have found an excuse now and they will target the opposition leaders uh, before uh, the 2024 elections. Well, that can happen if they are so inclined. The, the point is that uh, you can make almost any legislation by an ordinance. So... Uh, they come up with an overnight ordinance just before the elections and then say that it will uh, it will then be passed later. These are things that that are still uh, possible, but I, I was postulating on the fact that there is a law commission report. It will have to be debated on in parliament hmm. when the final legislation is passed. Okay. In term, of course, uh, the ordinance route, this uh, government has uh, resorted to it from time to time. There, right. Mr. Singhvi, with his political acumen, is a bit, is better placed than I am. But Mr. Hegede, uh, of course, you're a constitutional expert, and people like you and me, who are all the time questioning the government on various policies, and uh, what kind of a caution needs to be exercised? And I'm purely talking to you as 
as a journalist uh, who keeps asking questions. And uh, what if the, those cases come to our heads? What is the See, caution? Today, as yet, there is no law of sedition which can be acted on because there is a Supreme Court state. This new section imposed by the Law Commission has to be brought into uh, uh, the statute book either by the ordinance book or through passing it in Parliament. Once it is passed, let's assume it is passed some way, then of course we all have to be very careful about what we say. And uh, uh, often I, uh, I can resort to my favorite metaphor and then I, then then you have to then you it's only safe to discuss veg biryani and nothing else. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hegre, for joining uh, on the federal. And uh, one appeal to the viewers who are watching this interview: uh, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback, and stay tuned to the federal. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hegre. Subscribe to The Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.